so before we know it, one card becomes five cards, become ten cards. And listen to this. From the FICO uh, company, the average American has nine credit cards. TransUnion, a credit reporting agency, says the 50.2 million American households that carry credit card debt owe an average of 15799 on their credit cards. And these are 2012 numbers, okay? When you combine that with auto loans and other fixed payment loans, average household debt soars above $60,000. Now, that's not counting your mortgage on your house. And the trend is not improving. As surprising it may seem in the negative economy that we have, easy credit is still available. The credit card industry mails out more than 6 billion credit card offers each year, sending an average of six offers a month to each American household. Now, the crazy thing is this. When my Abby was three years old, Abigail Smith got a Citibank credit card offer that came to the house. She's three. Now, somebody messed up somewhere. It's craziness. The first thing you've got to do to get off this, me this merry-go-round, this, this debt consumption wagon that we're riding, is number one. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, stop borrowing. Somewhere we've got to make up our mind that we're not going to keep living and be a slave to. Now, you know, there's all kinds of slavery. You can be chemically addicted. You can be sexually confused. You can be, you can be food addicted. You can be shopaholic addicted. You can be work addicted. All kinds of aholics narcotics, holic, all of these different kinds of things that you can get into. But let me just tell you, we have gotten to the place in America where we have stretched ourselves to an extreme point. The national debt at this point has topped $17 trillion, which means $70,000 is on the head of every individual American right now. Now, consumer debt on top of that, our individual personal debt, let me just back up and say to you, it is not a sin to borrow money. It's not a sin, but the Bible does say this, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now, the greatest sin debt that Jesus paid, or the greatest debt he paid, was the sin debt. But I want you to see that he's also delivered us not only from the bondage of sin, but from all kinds of other bondages. And this is a present American captivity. It is a present American slavery. It is not a sin to borrow money, but when we are mortgaging against our own futures and the future of our children and our grandchildren, it becomes sinful.